Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we have seen how we can download various types of satellite data sets and what are the various websites from which we can freely download this data. If you have not yet seen that video, you can look at it in the description below. In the present video, we will see how we can compare satellite data sets with observed data sets in terms of precipitation so that we can determine which satellite data is good and near to the observed. As everyone knows that the observed data set is not uh, available for every area, there might be some areas where the observed data set is having many missing values or the length of the data available is very short and you need a replacement data so that an analysis can be done. In this case, we can use satellite data so that we can do some analysis. So we will see how we can compare these data sets to find out which is better. So this is the part one of the video where we'll be discussing about the background information regarding what are the parameters which we can use, what are the definitions and formulas to compute which data is near to observed rainfall. In the part 2 of this video, we will be applying the concepts which we learn in this video. So let's directly start into it to see what are various parameter metrics which we can use. So coming to parameter metrics, if we see, there are four main parameter metrics, namely hit, miss, false alarm and correct negative. The remaining three are the indices which we can develop based upon these four parameter metrics. So let's start what is hit, miss, false alarm and correct negative. So if we go right into it, what does it represent? In this parameter metric analysis, it represents the number of days where rainfall is recorded on the ground that is in the observed data set and the number of days in which the satellite is able to predict that a rainfall has occurred. What does it do? When we are trying to calculate heat, it represents in general terms, it will compare, for example, January 1st of this year, 2022. Let's assume the observed data is saying there is rainfall on the ground. So, if the satellite data set, whatever satellite you are taking, also says that there is rainfall, we will not talk about magnitude yet, but we will see anything more than 0 mm let's say. So if both are saying that there is some value of rainfall then that is termed as hit. You can do hit analysis for various rainfalls like 0 to 10 mm rainfall can be termed as light rainfall, 10 to 50 can be termed as medium rainfall and greater than 50 can be termed as very high rainfall. So you can categorize into these categories and then also you can determine what is hit, miss, false alarm and correct negative again. So this is what hit means. So miss, what does miss represents? Miss represents that when there is a rainfall on the ground but the satellite is not able to pick up that rainfall. So that is what miss represents. So when coming to false alarm, false alarm represents when there is no rainfall on the ground and that is the observation 
the observed uh, station did not pick up any rainfall but the satellite is saying that there is rainfall so this in terms is a false value that's way is referred to as false alarm correct negative correct negative in general sense represents that when both the ground and the satellite are not able to pick up or there is no rainfall picking up in both the observations that is ground data and satellite data that is termed as correct negative it's like both are correct so these are the four main indices and coming to uh, the uh, sorry these are the four main parameters and coming to indices the first indices is probability of detection probability of detection is number of events that a satellite rainfall data set is able to predict correctly so this is concerning when we are talking about observed data sets sometimes it's like it is mostly based upon the observed data set let's say there are 100 uh, datas of days where hits are 90 and misses are 10 so the total number of observed rainfall where there is some value of rainfall is taken into consideration for probability of detection so we try to understand how many days of rainfalls which have actually occurred are being captured by the satellite data so the formula is hits as you know hit means both are taking that precipitation is there divided by hits plus miss which gives the total number of observed rainfall data so in this case if we are having probability of detection near to 1 it means our data is doing pretty good it's able to get good values but when if the data is not giving any value near to 1 or near to 0 let's say it means it is bad so the next indices is false alarm ratio as we have previously seen about what is false alarm it's similar to that but in comparison with the number of times the data is getting correct to the ratio of number of times the data is wrong to the number of wrong plus right so it's like it takes the data it's trying to find out a percentage kind of the number of wrongs percentage so if we have a false alarm ratio of let's say 0.1 it means there is a 99% chance that the data is giving a good value right so if the value is near to 0 we say it's pretty good the value is near to 1 we say it's pretty bad because we don't want our data to give a bad value the last indices which we'll be seeing is critical success index the critical success index represents what are the correct estimation of rainfall when uh, the observed data is showing some rainfall is the satellite showing the same number of rainfalls without any negative occurrence so it's like uh, trying to tell us that uh, if the values are near to 1 says that the amount of false alarms and misses are pretty low so if we want to see how our data set is performing if we see the critical success index with a higher value near to 1 we say that the data is doing pretty good so in a short sense critical success index estimates the occurrence of rainfall only like if you see there is no correct negative value because we don't want to talk about the days where the satellite is not predicting the rainfall when there is no rainfall like we don't do any analysis when there is no rainfall right so we take only the rainfall days into occurrence and try to see the percentage of hits to the total number of days where 
both the satellite is able to predict correctly and also not able to predict correctly so these are the four parameters and three indices which we can use to understand how the data is performing so when coming back to these indices if the detection is high that is the value of pod is near to 1 we say that the satellite data is good it's able to predict correctly we are not talking about magnitude of prediction we are talking about if the prediction is correct or not similarly false alarm ratio if we have a very low false alarm ratio the model is doing pretty good and critical success index if it is near to one then our model is doing good or the data is doing good so these are the indices which we can use and regarding the magnitude as i have explained earlier you can take different uh, ranges of data like 1 to 10 mm 10 to 50 and greater than 50 and do analysis and then tell which satellite data is good for which type of rainfall because not all data sets can pick up all types of rainfall if they are able to pick up it's well and good it's very good data but if they are not able to predict we can take up few data sets which do better in those occasions so these are the indices which we can use and i hope you have understood the concept because we will be applying the same concept to find out which data sets are pretty good to be used as an alternatives for observed data when it is missing so in the next video we will see how we can apply this concept so if you have understood it please give this video a like subscribe to the channel and share it with friends whom you think this video might be useful see you in the next video